Hello everybody, welcome back to my RB14A build down here in Austin, Texas. Continuing with the uh, horizontal saber work. Uh, here I'm just kind of showing you how I'm doing a slight pre-bend on the HS905 nose rib. Um, I took a block of wood, cut it to the angle I needed, which is 10 degrees, and I just kind of used it as a measuring gauge as I bend the flange out to the proper angle. You only do this for two of the nose ribs. Um, yeah, yeah, Rocky's needing me to throw a ball there. Um, but just having the block there just to compare against kind of speeds things up. I didn't have any other better way to measure the angle. But just by bending it, comparing it to the block of wood, um, made things just simple. Here I am just double checking that, yep, I got the angle right. Let's speed things up here. You don't need to see the whole agonizing bend check, bend check. Label everything. Do the same thing for the HS1004 ribs for two of them. These are the innermost ribs. Um, here I'm continuing on uh, attaching the nose ribs that I just modified uh, to match drill a number, a couple of number 30 holes that aren't on the rib. And then, as soon as you're done, done with match drilling those holes, have to go get the HS1004 ribs and do, match drill a number 30 uh, single hole this time to the rib. Uh, found it easier to remove the 905 or the 905 nose ribs so that I could get easy access to the uh, hole I had to match drill. Checking my plans as always. Then as you go through and mark certain holes um, that you are not to dimple, you only not dimple these holes on the on these inner ribs. You dimple all the number 40 holes on the rest of the ribs, except for the ones on the little small tabs of the HS1004 ribs. And that is a mistake I made. I actually dimpled uh, the number 40s on the small tabs and you'll see me here in a bit raise my fist in anger so new parts are on order They're only seven bucks a pop only aggravating thing is the, is the time you know you're gonna make mistakes it's how you recover so here I'm going through making sure I got the rivet setting how I want it and just start using my pneumatic dimpler The devil, and here in a moment, you'll see me raise my fist going, Ah, dang it! All right, well, I'm back. Went order new parts, continue dimpling the uh, rest of the parts I have. You have to dimple all the nose ribs and all, all the internal ribs. Um, so once I get things up, you know, it's a pretty quick process, just keep dimpling. Um, Actually, saw at one point my pneumatic squeezer had kind of drifted from the spot I'd set it. Uh, when I go back and check it with a rivet, had to redo some of the holes. And then as I progress, I, I just go back and check with the little rivet I have to make sure that everything fits. I wish it went this fast in, in real life. My, my thumb actually kind of started getting tired after doing all these holes. But I'd rather do it with the pneumatic squeezer. I couldn't imagine do, trying to do this with a manual squeezer. I'm not even real sure if I could use the DRT in the background to do squeeze these. Every time I'm bending over, it's because I dropped the dang rivet. It's like, ah, ah, come here, rivet, go back here. Okay. I think there's a black hole that sucks down rivets.
take my picture for the AA log. Now here I'm starting to prepare the uh, skins to, to be dimpled uh, for the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, all I'm doing is using a, a straight edge ruler and a uh, soldering iron to remove the plastic. Uh, you don't have to do this, especially if you're going to plant the plane, which I am going to do, but knowing that these are going to have to sit around for a year since that's the lead time on my quick build wings and quick build fuselage, I kind of wanted to give it the extra protection, so I'm taking the extra time since I'm not in that much of a hurry. Um, but I'll just take the extra time and leave as much of the vinyl on as I can. So while the, this sits around for the next year, waiting for the rest of the plane to arrive, uh, I don't have to worry quite so much about you know any scratches on the skin. Extra work is it required. Eh, I don't know, but I did it anyway. See Rocky at the door there. A little harder when I got the garage door closed for him since he can't just be on a leash and enjoying the, the weather act to let him in and out. But you can see him poking his head in, making sure my progress is good. There's one skin done. I knew that lawn chair was good for something. Now make sure, one of the other steps I didn't show here is that I marked certain holes that do not get dimpled. Actually taped over them, you can't see that. It's on the inside. But these skins are identical when you start and they're mirror images when, you're, when you finish. So make sure when you're marking the holes that you mark do one side the mirror of the other. I double checked that to make make sure that I had the uh, marked holes mirrored. Didn't film that because it was pretty quick and not very informative. But you can start seeing where I've taken off the vinyl, exposing the uh, holes that I need to dimple. I still need to deburr the edges of these skins. That's what it has has you doing step one. So I'll, I'll be doing that later today, as well as hopefully starting to get get these skins dimpled. I'll be using the DRDT for the, for that dimpling. All right. Thanks everybody. Talk to you later.